What's been on your mind lately? Hmm. Expansion. Expansion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taking over the world. Uh, no, just like. Can I say something? Actually, I have been feeling fucked in the head. Yeah. I felt like I was just having like putting on a show to keep it together all week. And today is like, I still feel that same feeling, but I maybe things are starting to turn around a bit. Do you think it's probably, it was like an astrological thing? (laughs) (laughs) I get freaked out by that. Yeah. Sometimes I think it could have been that. The moon changes. The moon definitely affects the tides. Yeah. And then we're like 70% water. The moon's probably like fucking it's pulling and pushing well, and doing around. shit. Yeah. yeah. I kind of believe that, to be honest. Uh, when there's a full moon out, I will believe that too. Yeah. You know, uh, back in like old Britain. Yeah. Uh, they used to, lunacy used to be like a real thing you could plead in court. And lunacy like Luna originated from craziness that was induced by a full moon. Damn. Yeah. And I, I'm like, oh, that they, they were on some shit. Yeah. Because uh, I notice a full moon, and I'm like, damn, I'm nuts. Why? <sighs> but Sometimes. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on the upward slope. You know, I feel like I'm coming out of the slumps. A lot of what I feel is very much tied to my uh, non-masturbation streak. The topic of today's video is based off of a number of DMs I've gotten um, on Instagram. I'm Enraja Pandey on Instagram. He's mammoth, mammoth in space. space. Mammoth in space. Follow uh, us. <laughs> uh, especially if you have recommendations for future topics, you can f- follow us on Instagram. Hit the uh, DMs. Hit the DMs. Uh, I try to respond to as many people as I can. I'm probably, uh, I probably do a, a solid job of responding compared to other people. Nice. I don't. So yeah. Yeah. just expect a heart. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, sometimes people give me topics and then I genuinely think, I'm like, oh, that would be a good one. Nice. But a couple of people wanted me to talk about loneliness and heartbreak, going through a breakup or going through rejection. Anytime there's a relationship that was going for a while, there was a connection that was there for a while and then it ended. So that's the topic of the Damage Men podcast, episode nine. Yeah, boy. Roll that intro, dog. What it do, what it does, me being where you was, but it ain't what it is. Facing the mud, y'all really be hating the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know goon put too much bass in the sub, cup full of blood and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, then play this real loud where you live. Before we get going, this video has two sponsors. The first is my app that I just launched in Google Play in the App Store, Transmuted. Mm-hmm. It's a habit tracker app, which has no fap or sexual transmutation in mind as its cornerstone habit. It's a beautiful interface. We're actually really proud of it. It's uh, represented by a sword in the stone, a reference to the Arthurian legend. And when you have maintained a nofap streak for the day, you can hold down the bottom of the sword, pull it out of the stone, and that builds your streak. Um, There's also a statistics page where you can keep track of when your streak might have stopped and why you might have fallen off. And then a journaling section that we just added that allows you to track three things you're grateful for and what you're going to do to make today great. There's also updates that we're making all the time on the app. Every two weeks, there's going to be a new update on the app to make it better. We uh, scrutinize it every week. And in fact, all of the revenue that we will start pulling in from the app is just going to be going back into it to make it better. So it's not even like a source of profit for us right now. It's just something that we want to build to really build out our company, to build out our own products that we could be proud of, to represent ourselves as well as possible. Mm -hmm. And also to create something that's cheap for the viewer that I find genuinely valuable. So we're hoping to turn this into the best habit tracker on the App Store and on Google Play. You can check it out, Transmuted. There's also a link to it in the description box. Our second sponsor is Sinsama. Of the four iOS apps I use for my productivity, Sinsama is one of my favorites. It's what I use to calendar block my day. You can put down just a few highlights of your day and the hours or the amount of time you estimate it would take, block it in. Every time you have like a Google meeting or something, it will show up automatically in Sinsama. And then there's also a journaling section, but this time it's for like the obstacles you might encounter for the day or your goals for the upcoming week. It's a great way of staying on track with your week to block out which hours of the day should have what task. And it encourages you to only block in four hours of deep work every day. So it's like, I use four apps. I get out of bed in the morning and uh, as I'm going about you know, taking a shower, using my beard trimmer or whatnot, I'm literally like updating all these things on the app. Transmuted, Sinsama, I'm just going down the line. And uh, I think you'll agree, our days have been pretty productive these last few months. Mm -hmm. I mean, I won't say the apps (laughs) have been all of it, but they're a great way for me to know where my focus should be. 
And I also love on Sunsama like the drag and drop feature where if you need to like reschedule something, I just think the interface is really clean where you can just click and drag to totally. like a different day. Whereas like on the calendar app on Mac, you have to like delete it and then write the new one in the new day. And it's like very poorly made. Yeah, as someone who's now developing my own app and making it better all the time, I kind of look at Sunsama as a company to strive for to be like them because they are so like their design is so elegant and beautiful and the interface of like the drag and drop features everything is laid out really well so hopefully one day we'll be on their level but the links to both of those apps are in the description box with that being said let's get on with the episode today's episode is all about loneliness and heartbreak now i'm going to ask you your initial thoughts on how to overcome loneliness and heartbreak but i know you kind of like You've told me you've never really gone through a long-term relationship that's ended or anything like that. Yeah. But we all have faced some level of rejection or something was starting up and then it ended. Mm -hmm. And what does that feel like? What is the process of moving on? Yeah. Um, I'm a, a very experienced when it comes to loneliness. Heartbreak, maybe not as experienced, but I've had like little flings with women that have like ended, you mm -hmm. know? And so you feel these like little minor heartbreaks and... I find for me, I got to like every remnant of this human being. It's like gone, like contact info, gone. Instagram, gone. Like I don't want to see them. I don't want to think about them. Out of sight, out of mind, you know? And I think when you have that like empty space in your day, you will like automatically go back to them and be like, oh God, I was such a fucking idiot in that related gun, you know? Um, but then it's like, those are the times where like you should be like, well, let me dive into my work so I don't have to feel for now, you know, Yeah. until I'm over it. And so that, that to me is like my solution. It's like fill your days to the brim. Yeah. That is like the only solution that I've come up with, but I've gone through heartbreak in a major way, probably two or three times in my life. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I've never found a great solution to it. I also am like a deep extrovert. Like I cannot handle loneliness the way you can yeah like you kind of need it to refuel whereas i think i try to occupy the majority of my evenings after work with people and activities if i can and let me just slightly adjust this is semantic but yeah. i don't need loneliness to refu yeah. refuel i need alone time and i think there's like a drastic difference oh yeah did like, i say loneliness yeah oh, okay loneliness yeah. feels bad for everybody like true true I, I didn't mean loneliness yeah. i thought you i meant to say yes you need like solitude yeah i thought i said solitude but maybe not well, let, let me let me back up here for a second. So like the thing about relationships or I've tried setting this goal for myself in the past, like relationship goals. That is the one area of your life where it's really hard to set goals in. What were the kind of goals you would set? Like uh, when I was in L.A., I would like put up a picture of like Kate Upton, who's like the swimsuit I, model yeah, at the time. I know who that is. <laughs> and then I'd be like, I have a girlfriend. She was like, I mean, it's not like my girlfriend has to be Kate Upton. Yes. But like but I, I would, would like that. <laughs> I would be like, I have a girlfriend by this time yeah. next year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because I on my vision board it would be something like that. And it just would not work. Uh, partially because it, I wouldn't I wouldn't take any actions towards that goal anyway. But also like you cannot control how people feel. No. Like I have a great fear of marriage. Um, this has been very problematic in relationships mm -hmm. and also in recent times. I'll tell you, it's been an enormous source of disappointment to my parents who had been pressuring me to get married for now coming up on three or four years. It's crazy. Cause when you turn like 26 as a guy, like the, you start feeling the heat and there'd be a time where I would come I think home. I think that might be an Indian thing, though. You should invest in some Danish parents who don't care about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I meant I meant as Indian, like uh, yeah, I like that was said in the undercurrent yeah. of that. Yeah, as a South Asian male, you start feeling the pressure around twenty six as a guy, to the point where every time I would come to visit my parents, they'd be they'd have girls ready, like they'd made these <laughs> profiles for me. Just have seven women at the house. Yeah, take your pick. And I, I'm like, I actually can't even truly answer this question for myself. Why am I so afraid of marriage? Now, of course, that there's that like red pill um, philosophy that like marriage is a very risky thing for men, especially high status men, which is what I am. King. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clearly. Yeah. Do you? Uh, do hey, you like fuck you? I am high status. Are, are you sympathetic to those like red pill beliefs? Like, how do they make you feel? I used to tell myself that's why I was afraid of marriage, mm. but really, I don't give a fuck about that. That's what I thought. That's yeah. the way I, I read you, at least. Yeah, especially, especially when I would be asked, 
like about a particular future or for marriage, I'd be like, I think the reason I don't like the idea of marriage is because of the marriage courts in case it doesn't work out. Cause you know, like 50% of marriages in the U S end up in divorce and men get screwed and men get screwed. And who's to say that we're going to be better than the odds. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's genuinely, that's just what I would say because it was an easy answer. And I think like being in your position, like no offense, we've never given a fuck about the odds. Like exactly. Am I right? No, you're so right. So like, that's not really it. It doesn't even resonate with me. So I'm going to be like, no, I will destroy. That's like against the personal philosophy. Yeah, it totally is. The, The odds don't apply to me. Yeah. But I think something that genuinely is true is like, I'm afraid to show someone anything less than a presented version of me. Mm. Even in my personal life, I like to maintain some level of being presentable. Composure. Composure. Like I never like looking ugly. (laughs) Kind of a trivial thing to say, but like I don't want to be caught looking ugly. Do you think that could have to do with like not wanting to accept that about yourself? Like that there may be an ugly side of you? Well, I don't know. I don't think so because isn't it part of the human condition to just be ugly sometimes? Yeah, or that's just like, what I'm saying. Yeah, to be bloated or uh, tired or like crabby. Like that's just part of the human condition, right? Yeah. But the majority of the time when I've engaged with people in the world, it's been... I've, all, I've been very preoccupied throughout my life to present the best version of myself. I mean, I have a personal development channel. Yeah. And I like obsessively talked about these things. And especially the idea of living with someone... I can't maintain that level of like presentation all the time. No, all the time. That's yeah. That's like the risk. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor Noah had once said like, I'm down to get married, but I would never want to live with my partner. Oh, in many ways I thought that might be ideal. Like what if we just owned houses? Like we're rich enough where we just owned houses right next to each other. Or the alternative is, is that we have a place that's so big that there's plenty of distance that we can create to like keep a sense of mystery and composure. Yeah, I mean, that has been the cause of breakups in the past. Yeah. Me, you know, and that's really like a through line in this conversation is like breakups happen. We haven't really gotten to the solution part of it, but like a lot of times breakups have happened because someone works with well with you to a certain level and that level might just be like the presentation aspect of your life. Let's even take presentation as like a given. Like you can keep that presented version of yourself all the time. What if you can't keep excitement in your life all the time? Like a lot of times life is just work. Like it's boring, right? A lot of times what we do is boring day to day. Yes, very much so. I know it's hard to believe as like a viewer (laughs) from the outside. I seriously think it's hard for people to like understand that. Yep. Because they see how like glamorous this is. But like there are like weeks that go by. Like the, the recent funk that we were both in, I was just like not excited. Yeah. And like a lot of times a relationship can work when the things you do together are exciting. Or I feel like the thing is my perception of this is so limited because I'm in like month four of a relationship. Yeah. And it's like everything is just fucking rosy, you know, like nothing, nothing has gotten boring yet. It's like I haven't gotten enough of this woman, Mm. you know. And so I'm like, I know that my perception will evolve once we've been together long enough to where it's like. I have to do something to make it feel exciting again, you know, but what do you do to like. So you're saying like your pre- the presence of the other person is enough to like entertain each other. Like you don't need something exciting to do. I don't think at the moment. I think yeah. I'm like in the honeymoon phase. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's like yeah. well, I've been in relationships in the past where we never even have that true honeymoon phase. Like if we don't have something exciting to do, it's like not good. Mm. Like attempted, yeah, attempts at relationships. I was there was a girl I was dating in L.A. for around three months. Yeah where I realized like, unless there was like a restaurant involved or a party or like a night out at a movie, just us doing nothing, it fell apart very quickly. Yeah. I don't even mean literally nothing, but like something simple, like just watching a movie or like, like that might not be enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like a night in sometimes it was okay, but sometimes you like, you realize like I have nothing to say anymore. Yeah. Which is also, I think at least in my position, like, Sometimes that's fine. I don't mind like being sharing silence with another person, like especially if you can both like do your own thing, Mm -hmm. you know, but I think there are like women out there who like expect like a show every time. And that's not the type of woman I would be looking for. You know, I have a relationship coach now. Yeah. Who said uh, like, uh, yeah, 
the relationship. It's goes. me, guys. I tell them <laughs> to break up with everybody and say, "Stop spending your money on these hoes. Give it to me." <laughs> uh, he tells me some women, men and women, are addicted to being chased, mm. and they're addicted to like creating a level of conflict just for the sense of being entertained. And they don't. They would never consciously say they're doing that. But sometimes women will just like show enough interest to you to like keep you motivated, but not enough for you to be like fulfilled or happy. So you're just like, you don't quite know. And you can't, it's hard to completely break away because you have hope. And they keep giving you little, little breadcrumbs. Every time you feel like there's like, I've gotten my answer. There's no hope for this. They'll give you a little breadcrumb. And then you're in this push and pull back and forth where you're like, oh, well, but maybe, and some people are just addicted to that, you know? And so sometimes it's like the best thing to do is to break up, but it becomes especially hard to get over it because like you remember you, you reflect too much on the fact that there is potential. Yeah. You're constantly tinkering with the what if that's a dark concept. And then, uh, then again, a lot of people are just not over, you, you don't know a person's entire history. They're not over what came before. Yeah. It could have nothing to do with you. Like this has been a real thing for me is if someone doesn't like me, I I very much internalize to this day that there's something wrong with me. If only I was better. If I was like at a lower body fat per percentage or if my biceps were two inches bigger, she would like me. This is like, you are just damaged. Like this is a damage my podcast. That is a damaged person speaking. Oh, really? Like, that is not healthy. I don't think that's not a healthy thought pattern. Yeah. Well, I, I that's what the relationship guy tells me. He's like... He tells me this all the time. He's like, you know, compared to my average client, which he's like 80% of his clients are women. He's like, um, I don't hear of too many men like you. He's like, you are probably, he's like, you are a major catch. Yeah. King, you're perfect. <laughs> well, that's what he told me. Yeah. Right. I was like, oh, I don't really feel that way about myself. Most of the time I feel like sometimes you feel that way about yourself. I think you, you have your confidence about you, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think I can objectively be like. I have unusual things going on in my life. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess I go back and forth on how I feel about, because you don't, you get used to where, wherever you're at. In life, of course. You know, so I don't think of myself as hot shit. I which don't. you should not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mean think of yourself as like hot shit or a major catch. It's like, but you have the, the space to be like, yeah, I'm pretty cool. I like me. It, it, it strikes me once in a while. It comes, it, it occurs to me like, um, two nights ago, I was at a networking uh, networking event for creatives. Yeah. And this guy who I knew several years back, I just like saw his face. So he came up to me. We started chatting. And he is a chemist at 3M. He's like makes a good salary at 3M. And he's like, he's a super confident, cool guy. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yo, like you're working. He was a bartending that night. I was like, you're working the bar. He was like, yeah, I've gotten into distilling my own beer. But also like you just make a little bit of extra money. And I was like, oh, that would be cool. And I, I was saying in my head, like from a cinematic perspective, I'm interested in this. Like I'm interested in seeing what it's like brewing beer. I'm like, oh, dude, I would totally love to do something like that. Mm. So that's what I said. I'm like, oh, I totally love to. He's like, oh, we're hiring. You know, he's like, yeah. He's like, it's actually pretty great. Sometimes you can make like $300 a night. It's like pretty good money, actually. Yeah. He's like, do you want to? And then he like asked me point blank, do you want to? And I was like, bro. I was like, I, I didn't even know what to say. I, I couldn't get it. You were I was caught like, off guard. Uh, yeah, I was. I was like, there's no way that is worth my time. I know. Yeah. yeah. I was like 300. He kind of, he kind of uh, just dialed you. He needled you on your bullshit. Yeah. You were like, you, you were being like a uh, cool, like party guy. And he was like, do you want to do this right now? And yeah. You were like, no, you weren't supposed to ask me that. Well, I, cause I couldn't, I, I thought I was starting to tell him from a, like from a, like the perspective of like knowing what this is. Yeah. And maybe even like being able to brew up a drink and like the craft of that yeah. action, that skill, it genuinely does intrigue me, but I'm not motivated to make $300 a night of course working this fucking bar. And so that's in moments like these, I would be like, I would never fucking do that because I would be losing money by doing it yes. essentially. So then I've in those moments, maybe I'm slightly reminded I'm like, okay, maybe I'm a little bit higher status, whatever that means than the average guy. Yeah. But a lot of times I forget it. I think I often forget it because I really, <laughs> I really do harbor all of the rejections. Like I probably have like three or four major rejections where I've truly been heartbroken. Like mm -hmm. 
<laughs> sometimes it, it hasn't even been rejection. It's just been like things haven't lined up. But I'm actually still there in a lot of ways. And it's like the viewer asked me or someone in the DMs asked me this question, but I'm like deeply still there. And I'm constantly struggling for a way out of it. <laughs> you know what an Instagram thing I saw recently is like, I'm, I think it's so weird that people do like this flex on your ex culture. Yeah. You just need to hear, heal you goofy spirit. And I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, my only solution to heartbreak is to flex it's on your to ex. to flex on the exes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, never works. Somehow they're never flexed upon. Like they don't actually care. They don't actually care. <laughs> you don't feel any better. Like, yeah. yeah. I think it, the, the main idea hopefully is to like the whole flex on the ex culture to me is like, yeah, make yourself better for like a petty reason. And then hopefully once you've made yourself better, enough time will have passed where like you don't care about the girl anymore and you're just like better, you know? And yeah. I think that to me is the hope there. It's like for me, every sort of traumatic thing in my life uh, after it occurs, mm. there's a period of pain. And I mean, like consider a relationship like a broken heart, like a broken bone, right? Like that thing needs time to heal. So you fucking lay off for a little while, mm. you know, and you don't re-aggravate the injury by like doing unhealthy things. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you sink yourself into other things, right? And then enough, you look up and enough time has passed and you just don't care as much as you used to. Mm. And I think time is like, to me, the major, it does not perhaps like completely heal a wound um, or it does, but it leaves a scar, you know, and that's always there. But I think you can get over things. I don't know if there's any just type of way to be like, think about it differently. And then you're, you know, I think pain is pain. You know, there was a girl in high school. I've said this in previous episodes, but I loved her for like six years. Yeah. And then one night it's like, there was a group of four of us. We we're like all good friends, me, Sean, and then there were two other people. Yeah. So anyway, this girl in high school, I got dr drunk one night, uh, whatever my buddy's mom's basement. We were all there. And then I just told her like, damn, it's been years of this for me. And she knew about it the whole time, but she's like, you know, she loved me as a friend. Mm. I was like, I don't think I can see you anymore. And, uh, that was, I was also moving to LA that year and it was just, I, I would think I would be fine. And then like six months later, if I like, had a night out of drinking in LA, I would like come home and just start thinking about her and crying. Mm. And I was like, sometimes it's like, it swings back. Now a lot of that I will say is alcohol is just a freaking depressant. But also here's to, another yeah. thing I'll say though, the best way to go get over somebody old is to find somebody new. So if yeah. you didn't have anyone new in the mix, then yeah, yeah your focus is going to drift back. But I think if you cut the old person off and find someone new, yeah, like I feel like that's very, important yeah i guess i was in a phase of my life where it was hard for me to attract women yeah and um in many ways i feel very similar to that phase now because like theoretically i could attract new women today mm -hmm. i mean it's probably there's a good chance that i could do that yeah but um i feel like it's a little bit of a liability to be out and about dating again uh partially because I have like more to protect. Like my time is, it's more important that I protect my time now. Uh, and things are just higher stakes in my career. Yes. Life. So like I need to make the most of it. Sometimes I feel like how long is this YouTube thing going to last? And how long am I going to be at my prime for this? And I, some, I'm like, it's probably like I've got four good years to like really, I'm sure a career could last much longer than that, but it would have to look different. It would. A period of time. Yeah, so I like, think you are underestimating what you'll transform into, but yeah. Yeah, and so I'm like, I don't want to date like I like a 22 year old version of me would love to have everything I have in life now, and then just play the field and go date. But now, all these years later, I'm not even interested. It's like you have the means, but you're not as interested in the actual act of it, because it's like your priorities have just shifted a little bit. Yeah, and I'm more interested in like a deeper relationship than I would have been when I was a younger man. Uh, but also it's like, if I were to try to date someone new right now, I don't want the stuff that was a problem in a current or past relationship to seep into the future one. Like I want to make sure that I've like evolved in some level on some level and like become better. 
Have you heard of this thing like attachment theory? Like my re- coach told me to read this book. <laughs> so that's why I know about it. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's like attached. It though there's like four types of attachment. Yeah, there's three. I mean, there's oh, okay. it's secure, anxious and avoidant. Anxious people are just like worried you're going to leave them. So they're like, um, like oh my God. I, they're just like when they're around you, they're constantly afraid mm-hmm. that they're being criticized or like anything could ruin it. Like they have someone's probably like left them. Yeah. That trope of like girls with daddy issues. Like that's a, it's a pretty cruel thing to make, make fun of actually. But that a lot of those people like that where a parent has left them are very anxious yep. in relationships. So they like cling to the relationship. And then there's others who are avoidant. I'm not sure what leads to being avoidant. I think I have until recently been a little avoidant. I think I've had a lot of those tendencies. <laughs> yeah. Well. And Avoiding people, just like if someone starts to give them too lo- too much love, or they feel like something is working out too well, or someone's starting, to, they'd be like, "Oh my god, you're crowding me! Like, give me some damn space." Mm. So, a combo that happens all the time is anxious and avoidance ending up together. Yeah, because one of them is giving a lot, one of them's like, "Oh, give me space," but the more the person wants the space, the anxious per- anxious person just wants to, like try and please them and stuff. Right. I don't know how to solve this problem, actually. We haven't gotten there yet. So you feel like you're avoidant or you feel like you're anxious? Because the thing is, mm, I know. Yeah. I feel like I can play both roles. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like uh, I can also play secure. You know? I feel like in past relationships, I have played anxious and I have played avoidant. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like depending on the person. And so I don't think I'm one way. But I think what did, it's like I just face things in my life as like a single man without women in my life that like grew me up as a guy. Yeah. And I realized I didn't need a person. So that's what made me stop being anxious. I was like, Oh, all I really, you die alone anyway. So yeah, that's kind of dark, but yeah, it's true. It is true though. Like, and so I accepted that and I accepted that I know I don't need anyone. I don't literally need no one. I love people. I'd love to have great people around me, Mm -hmm. but in, in terms of need, like I'm okay, you know? And so I, I, I stopped being that anxious guy and I don't bring people into my life that I don't want like flooding me with love. And I like create an image of like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so I don't find myself faced with like an anxious lover. Mm. And I think a lot of that was just like personal growth, like knowing who I want to be and how I want to structure my life. I'm a guy who my friends don't call or FaceTime me. And that's like, I'd I've be a, fucking pissed off if someone tried to FaceTime me. Dude, I've had a friend be like, you don't like to be FaceTimed. I'm like, you've literally never tried to FaceTime me though. Yeah. And she's like, but I just get that vibe from you. And I'm like, you're right. You're correct. That's what I've done. If you try to FaceTime me, I will be pissed at you. <laughs> uh, have I ever FaceTimed you? Oh, I'm not talking about you. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I just, I want <laughs> yeah, the yeah, answer. No, no, we're the same person. Never once. You never have. You, <laughs> yeah. like, actually, I feel that towards you too. Cause like, we like, we literally text each other for work. Yes. And like, maybe once a month, Thomas and I will send each other a meme. Yes. As a bonding activity. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, we have a different thing. Cause I come over and I show you memes and you show me memes on your phone in person. Cause we see each other too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, sometimes when I've thought to say something, like, even whatever. As a leader, you're supposed to fucking compliment good work. Sometimes I'm even afraid to compliment Thomas's good work because I'm just like, yo, I don't want to be gay, but this was really cool. But you just <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, uh. and, and then, you, but you receive a compliment. When Thomas gets a compliment, he's just like repulsed. <laughs> he's, just like, he's just like, cool, thanks. <laughs> Can I get back to work? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I think I have a weird, I realized that about myself where like you say, you have this thing where like you accept the, almost the way like if, if a girl rejects you, you're like, I'm not adequate. Right. Yep. Um, and I think probably there's something in me that's like that. It, maybe not with women necessarily, but like where I don't like to accept compliments as true because mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, I don't want to get comfortable. I don't want to think I'm good enough because then I won't strive to actually be good enough, you know? Mm. And so if I accept your compliments or if I accept anyone's compliments or and I'm like, and I, I don't have enough. Like, it's not enough. I'm not good enough yet. So stop doing that, you know? And I realized that, like, I should be able to accept a compliment. Yeah. I think you you have self-belief enough. I think for in your case, it might be more of an idiosyncrasy than it is, like, a, a problem. Yeah. But I think it could even be, like, healthy for, like, yeah. you be, like, accepting the compliment for the other person's sake. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, thank you. Yeah, true. And I try to do that. 
Well, you have such a low tolerance for for bullshit. Yeah. And if like a lot of times people in the YouTube space, viewers, or if I run into someone on the street who watches the channel and they're like, oh, I love your channel. I'm like, do you actually fucking love my channel? Yeah. Or did you just see me? And now you're saying you love my channel, you know, like that, that thought occurs to me. Cause I'm like, well, you know, it's not that great all the time. Yeah. This channel's fine. Yeah. So fuck you. You're probably lying <laughs> so to fuck me. You, asshole. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. probably lying. Aren't you? you? It's bitch. not that great. You just saw me. Oh, what video did you see watching Jordan kill yourself? The kill is standing <laughs> over a man in the street. It was like, I just wanted a picture. <laughs> That's That'd how I feel. Good. Uh, to compensate for heartbreak, both in past and present. I just work out so much and so hard and it gives me just three hours to not be sad. Yeah. I, uh, I find myself doing that too. Yeah. I, if I'm feeling incredible, especially lonely or something, I, you know what I love about this is what? like the viewer asked me how to get over loneliness and heartbreak and we're like, I don't know. <laughs> We're like, can you guys write in the comments perhaps a good solution to this? Guys, if you have solutions because to loneliness and heartbreak... Give me suggestions in the comments below because I we th- we're not really solving the problem in this podcast, unfortunately. Have you heard of black tar heroin? <laughs> <laughs> I just want at it. this point I'll try anything. Yeah, <laughs> steroids perhaps. <laughs> Today I went in the gym. Yesterday I was straight up hit four hundred for a double. I was trying to go for a triple, and I like my. I'm glad my strength coach doesn't watch the podcast. He unfortunately watches my main video, so he can tell when I'm overtraining. But he, I don't think he watches the podcast, but I like straight up do my workouts way early, like a week early. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do two in one day and I'm like, I, I'm mindful of the lower back. Cause I'm like, okay, is my, if, I, if my lower back is really starting to feel at all something, I pay attention to it, yep. but then I'll do cardio or box. I would like, sometimes I've hit up my boxing coach for like a last minute session. Just be like, yo, my head's crazy. Like I need a session. And when he's not free, I sort of like just like try to look for other coaches because I, it's it's been one of my main coping strategies. I, am I think coping. it's a good one. I just don't think like if someone were, like again, I feel like I, the way I think about heartbreak is like li- a literal like wound. Yeah. Right. And like a literal broken bone. Like there's no like fucking witchcraft you could do to like just put that back together right away. Mm. It's like it's just to me like it's literally just time. It's time. Yeah. It's I guess time it's just, and not making it worse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know which side of that like I'm doing right now, but I guess it's like, yeah, it might be, it might be a long time. And I think it's also just like, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's heartbreak. It's tough. You know. I will say I would not be so dedicated to like life in general without it. Yeah. Like I, there's two ways of dealing with heartbreak. One is to feel sorry for yourself and stop moving sink into a depression embody lethargy and that's you know that's just a rough one bioneer made a video recently whose title i really love is like you're probably not tired you're just lethargic and it's easier to fall fall into that lethargy when you're either depressed or heartbroken or if you went through something like that so you have to tell yourself it's like more important now than ever to you got to keep moving Sometimes you make commitments to yourself and then as those commitments are coming up, you're like, oh, I don't feel like doing this. Do it. Do it. Like be a robot who does the commitment you gave yourself. And I think in those moments, what I've done for myself is like create a routine, create a very regular schedule yeah. that you adhere to and like make commitments like with, with the way you do it, like make commitments with other people totally. that you have to show up to yep. or else you look like a total asshole, right? And so do that consistently. So you're like consistently forcing yourself to like be this robot and get through your things. Because yeah. what you'll notice is like the times you don't feel heartbroken is when, when you're lifting, when you're really deep in work, when you're asleep, you know? So just keep doing only those things, eat, work, sleep, lift, and then just like enough time will pass and you'll look up and you'll be like, man, maybe this hurts kind of a little less. Also, it's like you can almost have fun during your heartbreak to see how much you can do with yourself yeah. to run away from your thoughts. I know that sounds a little like off. I'm sure there's better strategies for fucking healing. I don't know about how to see, heal. See, dude, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. I think all of them amount to like bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad that I'm dealing with this level of uncertainty in my romantic life. I'm glad I'm dealing with it like with a lot of movement because sometimes in these last several months, even though there's been a lot of confusion, there's also been just genuine happiness. Mm-hmm. 
And you know, back to the point. It's like I didn't. I actually had forgotten that it's a a meme in the lifting culture. Like, glad I got heartbroken. Now I'm gonna hit a PR. Yeah. I'm like, I think I would not have hit certain PRs without it, and all all kinds of things. Like my my motivation in a lot of ways is sky. It's like to a level like a man running out of a burning building or something. Like I'm so motivated because partially out of like an acknowledgement that if I stop. The fires are behind you. Yeah, the fires are behind me. It's also what's really helped keep me sober. Like, I thought heartbreak would make me want to have a drink again. There's been other things that maybe have made me crave a drink. But really, I feel very drawn to stay away from alcohol because one thing alcohol does for me is slows me down. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe like the first hour that you have your first beer, it p- p- speeds me up. But then after that, it, it's a pretty good trail off. And the next day I'm slower. I think I cannot afford to be slow these days. I think I've got a couple of years in me right now where I can't afford to be slow until until I've got this aspect of my life figured out. Yeah. So the main advice with heartbreak that I have, even though I'm, I might not be, I might be currently like a very unqualified person to be talking about loneliness and heartbreak. I think like, it's uh, valuable for someone who's trying to figure it out for themselves to offer their opinion yeah. and what's working for them currently. So. Yeah. I mean, what the only thing that I'm trying to stick to uh, in doing this is like talk honestly. Um, don't apologize for having your own needs and like communicating them or asking for clarification. If you, if you end up having a dialogue or you mm-hmm. know, if you haven't cut someone off completely. Mm-hmm. And then third, move. Move in every aspect of your life. If someone says, oh, you're overworking, just like maybe that's true, but just keep go as fast as you can. Whatever you're doing in the moment, do do it with as much focus as you can. If you feel yourself getting uh, sad or something like find immediately find the next thing to do, which I know you had said all this in the beginning, but I'm like saying it with like my soul now. Yes. Like, oh, this is what I have to do. And uh and then just like almost like don't even try to not feel pain. Like just be like, yeah, I'm going to be in pain. Yeah. And I'm going to be in confusion and pain. And oh, I guess that's that's all right. And like you'll be there. You'll be in there for a while. But at least if you keep doing stuff, you'll have a better body. <laughs> you'll probably have a better business. And then one day, uh, theoretically, there's a future where I won't feel like this and people won't feel like this. All that pain was transmuted. Maybe that's the word of the night is is turned all that pain was turned into useful work there was a useful output to it and when you do it like that it will have meant something yes yeah i think it's like very useful to recognize that this pain doesn't have to slow you down like in if anything it can speed you up if anything it can give birth to something new yeah um this guy paul check would say every wound is a womb you know to start something new so damn yeah hard bars bars Yeah, I think, and this I feel like applies to say people haven't been through heartbreak. I think a lot of this stuff applies to loneliness in general. Like when I'm alone, I just want to fill my life up, you Mm -hmm. know? And what I will do is like, if I'm feeling lonely, which even happens recently, even in a relationship, I still Mm -hmm. feel lonely sometimes. Yeah. And so I'll just like mass text, not like in the same group text, but like singularly text a lot of my friends yeah. and be like, yo, when are we getting on a phone call? I got, we got to catch up dog. And it's like all very, like, I just need someone to like be with me in spirit because I can't be alone right now. And even I go through that. You know? Yeah. And that's cool because just never forget the simplest thing a man can do is like pick up a stone and put it somewhere else and like build a cabin and like put in hard work, like unintelligent hard work into moving things and changing things. Literally, like, if you can go outside and, like, chop wood for three hours, yeah. fucking do it. That's that's literally a metaphor for what you have the capacity to do. Now, you could be tired. You could you could be feeling a lot of things. But as long as you've got these hands, at least, as long as you've got a mind, there are things you can do to push and pull things around and mm-hmm. change things and construct a life and an environment to your liking. And maybe now is the time to really, really do it and not be lazy about it because you're kind of like fighting for your life. Yeah. So shit, man, I'm fighting for my life. It's almost the best time. It's like, you know, when you look back, at least when I look back on the little heartbreaks I've had, it's like the first one, it's like, that's what got me to move out of my parents' house. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a blessing to me. I mean, I looking back my first time going through it, 
I felt like I was still making mad moves, but nothing like today. I guess maybe it's because I have more access to doing things on my own today, but also like I was not doing nearly enough back then. Mm -hmm. What I'm proud of this time around is like these three months of the year have flown by, man. Yeah, totally. And I think it's just because I've been, every hour has been usefully expended. Mm Mm-hmm. For a good part of the day. <laughs> I mean, you sometimes film me working out. I mean, I guess it's like. We're just doing like it doesn't even. I think oh, this is like actually like a perfect example. Yeah. It's like not always the most effective movement. Yeah. But the point is you got to be moving all the time. So if you mm-hmm. find yourself in like a. Don't don't let yourself overthink into inaction. You know, like, don't be like, okay, this isn't worth it. I should just stay still. Cause then the thoughts come back, you know, it's like, all right, we're doing this. I don't care. Like, you know, I just need to not think. And I think that's the, that's the key there. It's like, fill your schedule up. I don't care with what. Fill it up. I think accept the pain. Don't even try to, I say, don't even try to heal. Accept that you're going to be feeling bad probably for a good long while yeah i just don't even know what like don't even try to heal means it's like what is healing like just don't make it worse yeah i yeah. don't know what healing is but everyone tells me you need to heal but i just think that's time again yeah, yeah. it's time yeah well whatever yeah just i sometimes i hate like all this sissy language you yeah, know like jargon and bullshit <laughs> heal i need time to heal i'm like shut the fuck up all we have to do is like Move as fast and as hard as we can. Lift heavy weights and hit PRs, baby. <laughs> yeah. it's all I want. Anyway, this has been episode nine of the Damage Men podcast. Found everywhere that podcasts are found. Every single Sunday for you, folks. Greatness is coming, even if it doesn't feel like it sometimes. But we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.